what it is what's up are we recording in the cut yes we are recording um biscuits from heaven back with another video uh a very sparse statement that one can make you know i kind of had the edp shit go on uh then i realized i don't really want to record videos so i i've been making music um doing other shit you don't care about and i just haven't made videos so here's a video I hardly has done a reboot. I was watching Falcon the Winter Soldier. Um pretty good after all. Pretty pretty good. I thought it was gonna be ass pretty good. Um and I was scrolling down the KTT timeline as I do shot at KTT. And I saw this and I know this was supposed to be made for quite a while. Like it's pretty much one of the first things that when Nickelodeon or the parent company Nickelodeon announced they were doing a plus service, it was like one of the sellers. Disney had uh, WandaVision, Loki, Paramount has nature, killing other animals in nature, and iCarly. Go along with that, uh, I saw some of the pictures, um, uh, this is the funniest shot I've ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> Would Dan be a fun? <laughs> That's the funniest shot I've ever seen. If you don't know why it's funny, uh, Dan Schneider, this isn't funny. Pedophilia is not funny. But Dash Dash Knight is pretty much like the closest like open pedophile that uh Hollywood had up until Woody Allen and um and uh and the other fucking dude like the fucking herpy in his lip that looks like an older uh uh <laughs> my references are fucking uh ass right now for some reason. What's his name? Uh I'm not I'm not editing this. Fuck it, I'll look it up. Uh Peta, I can't. Can I can I type that into Google? Pedo, just EDP, <laughs> RP EDP, <laughs> RP EDP. Uh, Hollywood. I, it's, it's one of the biggest names. I, I don't know why I can't remember. I've probably said it a hundred times. I can't think of. Not Corey Feldman, RP Corey Feldman, but um. Uh. Okay. Apparently, you type in pedophile to Hollywood, you don't get any of the re relevancy. Fuck, I'm going to say director. God damn it. No. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> God, I can't fucking remember his fucking... He got arrested. Uh, COVID. Yeah, he got he got COVID in prison. Harvey Weinstein. There we go. Harvey Weinstein. Um, And then the person I was trying to... Right? Michael Rappaport. Heavy, Harvey Weinstein was like a fucking old-ass Michael Rappaport of the Herp and his look and all that shit. Anyway... I circled that bike all the way to say Dan Schneider's open pedophile. If you look into a lot of this shit with iCarly and with Zoe 101, uh, I'm not so sure about the shit he made after iCarly. He, uh, he also made other shows after that um, and after Sam and Cat. But they were, you know, towards the end of, you know, the relevancy of Kid Networks. Ne pretty much for the most part, Kid Networks, like, I don't I don't really watch Kid Networks, but for the most part, I understand it's kind of plateau in terms of intrigue especially on the Italian version format versus say paramount plus but um that point being made the why that's funny is because of how fucking fucked up it is ask if we get a part of this anyway uh i carly uh miranda cosgrove looks pretty good she's like 30 at this point uh looks pretty i think about 29 30 she looks pretty good for that 28 yeah may 14th oh wow she's um a day after me wow it looks pretty good for 28. I mean, I would say just turned 28, but it looks pretty good for that. Um, Nathan Cress, uh, Jerry Trainer. Jerry Trainer's gonna be like fucking 40 at this point, I would think, right? Let's see if he pops up. 38. 44. Is that makeup? Is that right? What's that? It's no way a motherfucker looks that young at 44. I mean, he's he, makeup aside, motherfucker looks all right for 44 if he'd be white. I mean, white people don't age the greatest. Okay, so here's here's another thing that's worth, I guess, mentioning. So here's this picture, right? And then here's this right here. Is this Photoshopped? Or is this just... So here's this. What the fuck is wrong with me? 
And here's this. I assume this is this is a full body, right? This. No, it's a different shot. Okay. But he takes the same pose, does he not? No, it's different. I'm an idiot. Holy shit. But uh, Brandon had pictures of these, just these three laying around. I don't know why he was taking pictures without Sam in them, but I guess he had a few of them. Uh, so Jeanette McCurdy, yeah, she's... Well, we'll get to that in a second. So yeah, here's the picture. Uh, kind of like this random Zim Zam flim flam of shit thrown together. Some of the same set pieces that we come to know and love, but obviously a little bit more mature. Still some guitars that you remember. I think Sam took a guitar and beat Freddie over it before a couple of times. Uh, but more mature, I would say, for the most part. Uh, I don't know if he still has an attic. There doesn't appear to be a... That might be a staircase here. Um, but, yeah. Look at the... I would say Cosgrove had a different taint, uh, like a different shade. Maybe it's makeup. I don't know. But she appears to be a different shade. Uh, Trainer doesn't look that much older uh r.i.p r.i.p i don't believe it, I, they haven't closed the door on him but i don't believe that mccurdy is going to appear and then obviously the most obvious one nathan crane uh crest looks like if you took zach from 13 reasons why and it made him like a complete fucking asshole like even worse than he was like the last season that's what nathan crest is turning that this is horrible this is absolutely like horrible. He did with, it, with a lot of with everything. Uh, so yeah, next level mid. This is a funny shot I've ever seen in my fucking life. It's gonna be fucking hot, man. <laughs> yeah, shout out to this nigga, man. Uh, so yeah, there's new people made. Uh, new added two new cast members have been added. Lacey Mosley is Harper, Carly's roommate and best friend, and Jaden Triplett. At Jaden Triplett also was in um a movie with I believe pretty major black entertainer. I wanted to say, uh, uh, fucking really unfunny, Tiffany Haddish. Uh, yeah, Tiffany, I, I want to say she was co-lead, co-starring with Tiffany Haddish in some movie where basically they switched, kind of like a, one of those switch by type of movies where I believe Haddish became the adult or became the kid and then Triplet became the adult. Uh, if I remember correctly. I believe that's was her breakout. I may be wrong about that, but I think that's where I remember seeing that name at. Um, yeah, so I guess Triplet's is supposed to be 13. And Freddie, I don't know if he's talking about a real age or what he's talking about with that. Yeah, Chris just did not age very well uh, whatsoever. Um, 28. Ugh. 28. Tom has not been good for him. Uh, 28. Holy shit. Uh, this is the funniest shit of all time. Uh, damn. <laughs> Yo. Uh, okay, so here. We'll, we'll go move on from that. There's a video of them talking uh, Trainer and Crossgrove. We'll go on to that in a second. But let me give these dudes a follow. Always love kind of TV and film type of Twitter profiles. So yeah, more mature, kind of like a more of an actual loft. Uh, I, I would say that the actual main room of the original apartment kind of felt like a loft, but it just felt like goofy as fuck as well. Like some shit you would see in a Nickelodeon show in the mid-2000s. But this feels like an actual kind of like adult room. Uh, uh, Carly, I forgot her name for a second. Carly, uh, still the gaming consoles, appears to be more of an Xbox gamer, which is awful. I believe these were in the initial one. Uh, there's so much knickknacks. This was from the initial one. Uh, I don't know who that phone was, but maybe it's a different color. Uh, there's so many. They have a, uh, what's it, a crosser, is it called? Cross, um, Crossley. It appears to be a Crossley um, record player. And then the thing with, uh, with Dan Schneider shows, they would have shit that's, you know, either looking directly like things in real life, but they didn't rename it, or they'd have variants of it, such as the pair phone. Uh, and then, like, they had the, the, the joint that T, T-Bone worked at was Java, a Java Juice cl uh, cl clone. I guess nowadays it's probably, like, you know, Tropical Smooth, some shit like that. But it was, it was, I think it was a direct Java Juice ripoff. And then the robot, obviously, the most noticeable one. So, moving from there. Uh, this is part... That was I think that was there in the initial one. I know the jukebox was. 
I'm trying to remember. It's really hard to remember things from you know two decades ago, but so they do have an upper stairs loft as well, or not loft, but room to work with. Uh, some things feel very reminiscent of the original initial one, I would say. Got the elevator too. That's very anachronistic right there. The bean bag. They had multiple bean bags, but I feel like they had different. I think one was yellow back in the day. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, they they did. It's like they're really doing a good job trying to blend old and new together. What? Goodness fucking gracious. Um. Wow. God, you never created so fucking hot, dude. Jesus Christ. All right, so we're. I think we're ended out here. Well, actually, let me let me read this. Uh, I don't want to read too much of the contentious stuff because I think anytime you have black people join a show, white people are going to be racist. That's just what white people tend to do on the internet and in real life. But I mean, I feel bad that they're getting racial. The the two new uh, stars are getting racial things thrown at them. It's pretty bad. Um, obviously, everybody who said it should be fucking beaten for being racist against the. You know, a new star and a, a fucking kid obviously should be fucking beaten. But, you know. Uh, Twitter speaks out against iCarly Rival Series and support of Jeanette McCurdy. Twitter discussion for episode of her podcast, Empty Inside. Apparently, from what I've read on Twitter, Jeanette McCurdy appears to have been through a lot of shit since kind of flaming out of the... Uh, not I don't want to say flaming That sounds like I'm being an asshole. But since kind of uh, wafting away from the TV industry uh, after... Pretty much after the mid-2010s. All right, a revival of the popular American teen guys with June Sunday. Sam Puck has opted on to return for the upcoming show. Pretty final, I would say. Uh, Karen Brar, I believe that's um, is that is that Rowley? That's Rowley, isn't it? Or am I geeking? Oh, that is. I see. I was thinking it was the Indian cat, but I didn't. I really didn't want to call it because it sounded. Anyway, uh, the <laughs> child actor, traumatic acting or special working the shows with Dennis Schneider, uh, known for his work. Why didn't they call him a pedophile? <laughs> that motherfucker is a pedophile. Uh, Drake and Josh, as well as a number of other popular Nick shows of the era. According to McCurdy, the professor, producer was mentally abusive towards the young actresses and had an unshakable obsession with their feet. They can say everything except pedophile? The show was, in fact, including many few related scenes. For example, there were scenes where characters were made to put someone's feet in their mouth. <laughs> That was, that was so that most of the time this shit became uh, something that occurred because of well, not because but what what the complaint is a lot of the time Jeanette McCurdy was the one made to do the heinous acts um, more often than not her feet were depicted I feel like more than anybody else looking back these answers were a lot of times so a gag that was a gag up until it became like pretty much people was talking about there being no pedophile. Like in the 2000s and definitely in the early 2010s, it just wasn't something you could talk about any kind of uh, public footing up until now. You know, looking back on the trainers, yeah, yeah, Dan Schneider is fucking disgusting, absolute, absolutely a horrible fucking person. <laughs> Will you please name Sam's toes for us and like. You know, it, it it's really funny that people basically cheered on pedophilia because a lot of the foot scenes in that show are some of the bigger ones. Um, holy shit. Wait, what? Hey, Dan Schneider. I know you're watching my Vine. Do you like my Vine? Vine. 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 Look what you've done to me. Ah, uh, holy shit, that is sick. Am I still recording? Let's see. Yep. There we go, 14 minutes. Wow. Um. Hmm. Amanda Bonds was also in Dan Schneider shit. She went crazy. Now, I won't say crazy. That, that's dismissive, I suppose. She also went a little bit uh, ballistic. Ugh. Ooh, that's not a good look. I mean, it wasn't a good look before I saw that video, but... Whew. Yeah, Liz Gill, she was doing some crazy shit. Um, 
the the tweet. This is from a, I was going to reference uh, Liz Gills earlier, but Liz Gills she was into some or using some exploitative ways. Uh, Ariana Grande. Uh, I don't remember Victoria Justice how she was used too much, but yeah, Dan Schneider was. Uh, a fucking weirdo, to say the very least. What? What is? Anyway, all right. Okay. Um. I call this an African country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I call it right about the name of Curdy. Yeah, I would say so. Um. I was trying to check the name Curdy. Probably got blackballed. I mean. Honestly, God, a lot of people think don't account for this, but it's an actual factoid, and it's been said time and time again that a lot of child stars pretty much on the verge of breaking after some of the shit they go through as kids, and to I guess silence any potential opportunity they have to let shit loose once they start talking. The media just blackballs them. I mean, it happened time. It happened to fucking Britney Spears. You can blackball Britney Spears, you can blackball fucking anybody. I mean, no offense to Jeanette McCurdy or Amanda Bynes or fucking Ashley Tisdale. Uh, there's, you can blackball anybody if you can blackball fucking Britney Spears. And Britney Spears is, you know, due to just how much relevancy she had in 2000, she's been able to kind of break through and talk often. But I mean, she didn't really get a platform uh, here it out, really, about the shit she went through until... 2021, and she came up like in what the 1999, 2000, to 20 years. I mean, it's it's some real shit, dude. Um, but yeah, I I don't think, from what I see, I don't see anything that makes me think that the cast, as it is, don't support what she's doing, Jeanette McCurdy. Um. I just think that, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep on, I mean, like, if they don't feel the same way about things that have happened in the industry, you gotta keep it moving, I mean, you know, you, I don't think you can hurt yourself, uh, just to help somebody else, like, I think that they should definitely be cognizant and even be able to recognize, like, admit that Sam did this, that, that kind of like what the That's a Raven show probably should have did with Orlando Bloom, which they didn't. Probably recognize that this guy was a piece of it and move on, you know, after the first episode, two episodes, whatever. I would just like ignore her and act like she didn't happen. That would be very disrespectful. Then we'll end off on this. You know, I got on the tangent quite a few times here, but we'll end I'm up on Miranda this. Costco. That's right. I'm Jerry <laughs> Trainer. I play Spencer. You know she plays Carly. I play Carly. Yeah. Where are we right now? We are in the updated Spencer apartment now that Spencer is rich. He's Making rich. it rain, people! Okay. Really cool. The bottle bot made Interesting. by the original sculptor, Tristan, uh, who did a great job recreating it because the original is in the Smithsonian. <laughs> is it actually in the Smithsonian? Wait, no, there's no way it's actually in the Smithsonian. There's <laughs> the original um, show. They're like a little bit different, though. They're a little different. They're not exactly the same. Yeah. They're more mature. There yeah, I figured those like are different. There's a wall here. That separated the kitchen. That Counter. was like a really old-fashioned computer that we used to think was super cool. Yeah, the I'm fashioned. At. Let's calm down. <laughs> He's got a cool little bar made out of the back of a picture. They had, they had an iMac copy. I used, I mean, I thought it was shitty to be cool, too. Um, well, I don't know what they called iMac back then, but what that shit was, um, the, the Mac ripoff. Which is kind of a throwback to the, the studio. The studio, yeah. Where there was a couch in the back of like a, like a Mustang. Miranda's going to go check out upstairs. Which is where she used to yeah, do the show. Exactly the same as the other one. It goes. It goes nowhere. nowhere. <laughs> you know what the best part of doing a show with you guys as grown ups now is? What? You can cuss? We're gonna cut that. Um, <laughs> you can cuss. Ronda Cosgrove is a funny fucking person. Um but yeah, he I mean he was a grown up back then. I mean, this was like it started fourteen years ago. So he was still like thirty even in the first one. He looked actually about 24, 25. He did a good job of he does a good job of looking younger than he actually is. <laughs> this has been Miranda and Jerry for tour. the tour of Spencer's new apartment. Still got it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is changed.
I, you know, I, I, I can see this being really, really bad. So it's not going to be a kid's show. The, the actually like plugging in the part about cursing makes me think it's going to be like kind of like, uh, uh, it reminds me of like some of the shit that ABC trying to do like their ABC family spinoff for like pretty much the same tone of those ABC family shows from the 2000s, but like a little bit more mature. I can't think of any examples right now, but. I think that's what they want to shoot for is really like probably maybe maybe not a curse word too often, but like maybe some dramatic effect situations that obviously like a, a 12 year old wouldn't be able to get. I don't know how much they can deviate because I mean, I, I they really shouldn't have any ties to the, con the current audience of kids because those shows from the 2000s, the Drake and Josh. That's a Raven, even Stevens, like wacky ass shows from that period don't appear to be the flavor of the current generation. Like they do have kitty shows, but it seems like for the most part, the kitty shows don't have adult themes anymore. They pretty much have, for the most part, doubled down on the kitty aspect of it. I see it with the cartoons, I see reference the cartoons every occasional time to time. I try to follow. I don't really follow Cartoon Network, but I try to at least be cognizant that the Cartoon Network has new cartoons that are not regularly shown at uh, Adventure Time. But it appears to be that the theme of the now is to be as kiddy as possible with your presentation and maybe you occasionally sprinkle in some adult things, uh, you know, kind of be called back towards audiences that, you know, may once in a while check back in, like people like me that are you know, 21, 22. Um... So yeah, I don't think they should be beholden and even sound like a kid's show or even seeming like one. This person's annoying as fuck. I hate people like this on Twitter that just plug every fuck that they can find. Holy shit, they're fucking annoying. This is the bedroom? From the OG one? God, I don't remember that shit. Holy fuck. I remember it being a window they used to like kind of sneak out of and like kind of chill there, but... Whoa! 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 <laughs> We're done. That's it. We're done. Whoa! Whoa! That's too much. That's too, too fucking much. I'm done. I'm done. I hope you enjoyed this video.